Item Number SCP-2016 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-2016-1 is to be kept in a standard containment locker at Site-20. Testing with SCP-2016-1 must be approved by at least one Level 2 researcher. SCP-2016-1 must be inspected monthly for repairs. Description SCP-2016-1 is a knitted doll resembling a human male with a long white beard and dark green robes, measuring approximately 32 centimeters in height. When humans enter REM sleep within 3 meters of SCP-2016-1, they will experience vivid dreams. In addition to this, subjects will also usually encounter SCP-2016-2. SCP-2016-2 appears as an elderly human male, with the same appearance as SCP-2016-1. It is always capable of understanding the language spoken by the dreamer, though it is not capable of verbal communication. These dreams always end with SCP-2016-2 handing the subject a piece of chalk and creating a wall, while motioning for the subject to draw a rectangle with a circle inside on the surface of the wall. If a subject attempts to draw the shape indicated in the dream on the surface of a wall within seven days of having the dream, the drawing will transform into a door with a round handle. If the subject opens the door, it leads to an open meadow, with a stone tower located a varying distance away. There will be a paper attached to the tower's door which reads, To my new apprentice, in the subject's native language. Said tower's floors contain several libraries and laboratories. All subjects who have used these facilities have died in their sleep within five years. Cause of death is unknown, but all subjects have been reported to release a gaseous mass from their mouths which disappears seconds later. Video surveillance shows an elderly, translucent human male similar to SCP-2016-1 and-2 approaching the sleeping subjects and absorbing the gaseous mass into his hand. Authorized personnel may refer to Exploration Log 2016 for further details about the tower. Level 2 access is required to view the unabridged log. Exploration Log 2016 Day 1 Findings First exploration of the tower. Agents are sent to map the structure. Five floors in total are counted, each with an area of approximately 360 square meters. The tower is made of stone blocks and contains minimal furnishings. Most of the interior space is occupied by the libraries and laboratories. Several potted plants are found throughout the floors. Samples of the plants, air, and water are taken. Analysis shows no differences between samples and real-world equivalents. Day 2 Findings Further analysis of the libraries is made. Over 3,400 books are counted. Most of them contain information about the anatomical workings of several animal species, including humans. Another frequent subject is the list of physical principles of electricity and how it functions in the nervous system. Most books display illustrations which can be found in several medieval textbooks, although books from the 17th to 20th century were also found. A smaller portion of the books contain texts about the nature of the soul and the afterlife. Day 3 Findings Analysis of the laboratories is made. Most of the equipment resembles chemistry apparatus from the 19th century, while others have yet to be identified. Several flasks containing amino acids and organ tissues from humans are scattered throughout the laboratories. Most of the equipment have no obvious function, while others seem to be replicating the Miller-Urey experiment. Day 4 Findings A hidden passage in the fourth floor is discovered. The passage leads to a living quarters with minimal furnishing and multiple family paintings and ash urns. In several of the paintings, a figure similar to SCP-2016-1 and SCP-2016-2 can be seen. Day 5 Findings Another secret passage is found, this time in the first floor. The passage leads to a type of basement. Several coffins containing corpses in various states of decomposition are found. 
Each coffin is marked with a name, date, and information about the corpse's health before death. None of the corpses show signs of violent death. Day 6. Findings Another secret passage is found, this time inside the tower's basement. The passage leads to a round, brightly lit underground chamber containing several surgical tables. Each table has a preserved corpse on it, with several machines of unknown purpose attached via cables to the corpses. Several journals detailing experiments with the corpses are found. The machines and corpses are brought to a foundation facility to be studied. Day 10. Findings. The purpose of the machines is discovered. After days of analysis, a corpse was reanimated by using one of the machines. The reanimated subject remembered all of his memories from when he was alive. The subject was kept under Foundation custody for further study. Day 12. Findings. A journal was found in the tower's basement. Inside the journal were also found small paintings of an adult human female, a young girl, and a figure resembling SCP-2016-1 and-2. Said paintings had the phrase, I'll bring you back, I promise, written into them with black ink. Below are two notable excerpts from the journal. Addendum 2016 Beta Elizabeth died yesterday of a heart attack. Susan and I are the only ones left. I don't know what to do anymore. She's crying and afraid, and nothing I say comforts her. I can't blame her. She's only a child going through all of this. I've already buried Elizabeth in the basement. Susan keeps asking me why this is happening. Why God is letting it happen. I don't know what to say, but I keep telling her everything will be alright even if I know it isn't true. I have to be strong for the both of us. She goes to sleep sobbing every night, and I try to tell her some of her favorite stories, but she doesn't want to listen to any of them. She just keeps saying she wants mommy and the rest of her family back. I've had an idea. It's crazy and inhumane, but I have to try it. It's the only option that remains. I used Elizabeth's knitting tools and what's left of our dream reagents to make some dolls. I can't leave the tower physically, so I'll send them away to whoever is willing to use them. I hope none of the hunters find them. I'll bring anyone who uses the dolls here and teach them what I know. I need to buy some time for my research. May God forgive me for what I'm about to do. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.